Hi everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. We've got a question from a fellow boater. Alex asks, Jeff, connected to shore with full 12 volt lighting and electronics running. Okay, you're right. So a lot of us do that, right? We're, we connect to shore power and we have a lot of things that are turned on, right? The lights might be on, the fridge might be on, maybe the nav, right? Underwater lights, whatever, right? stereo. You've got most of us when on our boats, connected to shore power are actually using 12 volts. Now here's the question. Is the battery charger that's connected to battery bank supposed to sufficiently keep up with the batteries when under load and not let the batteries drain? Question mark. Follow up question. Any workaround to using 12 volt systems that don't affect your banks by drawing too much? It's a great question uh, from Alex. The reality is that that is often overlooked on too many boats. Think about it, right? So let's say for example, you've got a 40 amp battery charger, right? Or even a 20 amp, which is actually common. So let's actually use a 20 amp battery charger because it actually applies to a lot of boats. You've got a 20 amp or a 30 amp, but 20 amp is a good example. You've got a 20 amp charger and now you connect to shore power. And that 20 amp charge is going to charge just two batteries. But the issue is when you're connected shore power, you're also deciding to run some loads on your boat. Your refrigerator on, the lights are on, sharp water's on. So you could easily find yourself easily drawing 15 amps. And that's not without a lot of effort. 15 amp draw is not a lot, right? Especially if you're awake and it's maybe dark outside and you decide, especially with illumination. So now what's the net going in your batteries? You have a 20 amp charger but you're using 15 amps. So your battery charger is outputting 20, you're using 15, and you're only netting five. So now five amps going in a battery bank, and let's assume that battery bank is 200 amp hours, because generally boat builders always size a battery charger to be 10% of battery capacity. So if they put a 20 amp battery charger, there's probably a 200 amp hour battery bank. Now, if you've got a 200 amp hour battery bank and it's somewhat depleted, half of 200 is 100, now, now here's the censure, right? What happens? Now you've got, you're only charging at five amps because you're using 15. So it's gonna take you five into 100. It's gonna take you 20 hours to recharge that battery bank because when you're on the boat and using the boat, you're taking away the charging amps for your own benefit, right? So that's why some boaters literally, and I've seen it, they had to literally get off the boat. They couldn't be on the boat to get it charging. Worst example I've ever seen, or best example, 800 amp hour battery bank with a 20 amp battery charger on a Grand Banks 42. When they would actually connect to shore power at a marina, they would actually deplete their batteries. Their only way for them to recharge that boat was to leave the boat and turn everything off. Because by the time the refrigeration was running and everything else, they were barely keeping afloat, right? And so that's the reason why it's a really good idea to always have a little bit bigger charger. You know, the minimum is not most often the desired state. It's the bare minimum. So when you're sizing a charger for your boat, especially when you're in the lower amperage and you're doing minimum and you might have only a 20 or 30 amp charger, think about what is gonna be a typical current draw that you're gonna do when you're on the boat and you wanna recharge the batteries at the same time. And generally that means sizing a charger, especially on the lower ends, not going with the minimum. If you need a 20, get a 30. If you need a 30, get a 40, right? Now, I'm not saying if you need a 100, get a 150, because at that point, you're fine. You're not going to be drawing 100 amp DC loads for most of us, right? But, you know, 10s, 20s, 30s, you know, could easily be 40s, right? Not always, but if you need a 10, maybe get a 20. Go a little bit more up so that you can offset your use of the DC power while you're on board, whilst at the same time recharging your batteries. And so Alex actually into that and he said, perhaps a higher output charger, maybe. And he's bang on. That's exactly right. Go with a bigger charger so that you can both charge and run your loads at the same time. Great question, Alex. Thanks for asking. If you're curious, we've written whole articles about this. Go on our website, search it out. Uh, and we've got a lot of other uh, tech talks about this very topic. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, it actually, it really does make a difference. It encourages us to keep posting. So if you're watching this video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, we really do care because the more of you that are watching, the more of us over here are willing to put, spend more time in creating content. So thanks again.